We uh, did a lot of homework on our routing and our planning for this race. We had uh, Juan Villa, Shoreside, two meteorologists, Bruce Buckley and, and Roger Batham, and then also our strategist, Kevin Coston, and our navigator on board. Had a, we had a really solid plan. Um, we kept inshore to keep out the bump. We went around the inside of a couple of those big storms uh, just to protect the asset because we knew the race was going to get lost on the first night, not won. And did you get a little shift when you went inshore to come back out on starboard? Exactly right. Yeah. That was it, yeah. yeah. So we, we, it started, the model started to firm up with some good information and so we let them go and, and we, you know, it looked risky from the sidelines but it, we'd done so much research on, on the routing that um, we knew that big right shift was going to be there. The benefit of being out of the, the current, the East Australian current runs south and against the wind it causes some significant wave heights. So... The plan was just to protect the asset and get through the night. Well, Peter Harburg, the owner, has tried for a long while. He's had seconds and thirds and fourths to finish, and ultimately you got the job done, but Peter wasn't on board. Uh, talk us through that story. Yeah, look, so Pete, um, you know, he made a decision for the team not to come because the first night was going to be pretty rough, and he just felt that if we were distracted, um, helping him around the boat and those sorts of things, which, you know, seems like a very insignificant thing but um, we're as a team committed to winning so that was his sacrifice but he seemed absolutely delight, delighted and overjoyed when you you got the victory and you were saying before he thought it was one of the best days of his lives when the, you crossed the finishing line is that right yeah look um it, it's i guess it's hard to watch from the outside when you think oh the owner didn't sail on the boat this is a very much a team sport i mean there's been a group of guys here all morning packing the boat up i think all in all, there's about 20 of us. We have reserves. Um, you know, we have people like Flano dropped out due to the COVID situation. So you've got to plan for a lot of scenarios running a project like this. It's a very complicated bit of machinery. And, um, you know, Pete's part, very much a part of the team. He's the team owner. And if he missed one race, you know, he's, been, he's built this thing and it's our journey and he deserves everything he gets. And it was a rush to get the boat ready, wasn't it? Because you broke the mast at Easter time in the Brisbane Gladstone race and then COVID set in and uh, all sorts of things that went against you. You couldn't do the qualifying race, the Cabbage Tree Island race in Sydney. How big a rush was it at the end? Yeah, so our last two years, uh, I'll give it to you briefly, but it, it went something like uh, we did this race and we came last out of the 100 footers last time we came here. And that was going to be our... When uh, Tasman, the five of you, were virtually all together. Oh, you well, might have got around actually, first, did you? Actually, we got there third. Uh, it was Comanche and then uh, what was InfoTrack then, now Law Connect. And uh, we broke the top spreader in the night and we didn't know that until the sun came up. It looked like someone's thong was hanging off the mast. <laughs> and um, A foot flong. And flong, so not, we, uh, yeah. we lost the other two, Wild Oats and Scallywag up to Derwent. But we led them in, yeah. Yeah. And so we shipped the boat to Europe uh, two years ago. COVID struck. The boat went to Europe. Uh, we didn't go and do any regattas. We were booked to do the Maxi Worlds, uh, which is the most prestigious race for this sort of boat. We're going to do the, um, the Middle Sea race and the Fastnet. And then um, COVID struck. The boat got put back on a ship, got brought back to Australia for last year's Hobart. The Hobart race got cancelled with 10 days to go. Then we thought, well, while we sort of got it in Australia, we'll do the Brisbane to Gladstone, which is our pet event, you know, we're Queenslanders ultimately, and um, we took the boat back to Queensland, did the Brisbane to Gladstone, we're three hours from the finish, three hours ahead of the race record, which is our race record, uh, it was going to be a time you could never beat, we dropped the mast at midnight, so then we ordered a new mast from Southern Spars, and when they started building New Zealand, Auckland got shut down with COVID, so that delayed the lead time with the build process. So we just put the mast in the boat with, you know, like, it's, we've done five days sailing on that rig. And never missed a beat by the, the sound of things compared to some of the others? Look, uh, yeah, it's tough. I mean, we, we were against a lot of adversity and all of that, but we're, it's a professional sailing team. I mean, I think that not many people realise a lot of these boats are fielded with, um, you know, they're, they're amateurs and pro combinations and then... It's the smaller boats are amateur teams. This is a full professional sailing team. So with that and comes... And a full Australian crew. This time, yeah, full Australian crew. Mm. What's happened this year with COVID is we normally do a bunch of sailing in the middle of the year and get to prepare our boats at a bit higher level. And um, this year it was all jammed right at the end. So I think what we're seeing is just 
boats that maybe could have been prepared a bit better, and uh, that's just due to timing. Uh, the race itself, yeah, I mean, the first night was reasonably tough. <laughs> There's been tougher ones for sure, uh, but yeah, that would have been, you know, your stock standard expectation of a Hobart race is what we did there.